stepdad destroyed my $900 prom dress to teach me a lesson about money, but when my uncle got involved, the situation escalated beyond anything I expected. Now, my family is torn apart, and I have to decide if I should press charges. I'm only 17 and not sure if there's any legal action I can take. For some context, I live with my biological mom and her husband since my parents separated and were never married. I originally lived with my dad from the age of two. He won custody in the custody battle, but he later lost custody after a severe work accident left him paralyzed, making it impossible for him to take care of me. I still see him every weekend and spend the entire summer with him. When I was 10, I moved in with my mom, her husband, and their two sons, one stepbrother and one half-brother. Ever since then, my stepdad has made it clear, both directly and indirectly, that I've disrupted their lives by re-entering my mother's life because I'm just another person they have to take care of. I've been working since 10th grade and have been saving up for my senior year in college since last year with the money for my job. My mom and her husband made it clear that my mom would only help with the basics like my graduation cap and gown, senior dues and senior class photo, everything else, like prom, I'd have to pay for myself. I earn about $400 every two weeks for my job, which I've been saving entirely and I make extra money by doing nails around $100 a week plus tips, which I use for spending money. Since it's my senior year and the last year of high school, I wanted to go all out for prom, so I set an $800 budget for my prom dress. My prom is in April, and I wanted to get my dress early since the really cute ones sell out fast. So I went prom dress shopping in December and found a gorgeous dress that cost $890. It's dark green with a long train, rhinestones embedded into it, and glitter throughout the fabric. When I first showed my mom and stepdad the dress, they asked how much it was. My mom said she wouldn't pay for a dress that expensive, but I told them it was fine because I had more than enough money saved up to buy it and would still have plenty left. $23,000 to be exact? though only my mom knows that. My mom said I could get the dress and that it was very pretty. However, my stepdad said it was irresponsible and a waste of money, and that I should use it for better things like helping out the family and paying some bills, suggesting I get a cheaper dress for no more than $300. Mind you, both his son's own PS, fives and multiple pairs of $200 plus shoes. Long story short, my mom disagreed with him, and I ended up getting the dress. She even contributed $150 toward it. However, ever since then, my stepdad constantly brings up that I should help pay for things around the house since I have so much money to throw away. But my mom always shuts him down, saying that I work hard for my money, and that I already help out by paying for Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Hulu bills, while my 18-year-old stepbrother doesn't pay for anything. Last Saturday, we had a huge argument because my stepdad suggested that Sigjad should help my stepbrother pay for his prom, to which I firmly said no. He later called me selfish and said it wasn't fair that I get an expensive outfit while his son doesn't. I guess I responded with some snark saying, that's not my child or my problem. He then tried to complain to my mom, who sided with me, saying that if anything, he should pay for his own son's prom. Well, today, I woke up from a nap and noticed my prom dress was missing from my closet. It was right at the front, so I immediately noticed it was gone. I asked my stepdad if he'd seen it since my mom was at work and he told me with a condescending smile that he was washing it. I immediately ran downstairs and saw my dress being washed on the heavy-duty cycle. I canceled it right away, but the damage was done, most of the rhinestones had fallen off, the glitter had washed out, and the entire dress was mangled. I took one look at it, then threw it in a trash bag and left from my friend's house, taking the dress with me. I texted my mom and sent her pictures, but I'm currently at my friend's house lying on her bed. Her parents hung the dress outside to air dry so that my stepdad can't blame them if it was dried in the dryer. I know he did this despite me because he never washes clothes, cooks, or does anything around the house since he considers himself the man of the house. So there was no reason for him to be washing my dress, even if it needed washing. Is there anything I can do? I realize neither of them can replace it considering their difficult financial situation. I'll keep you all posted when mom gets home. So far my stepdad has called twice but I haven't picked up and my mom's at work and I'm unable to take calls. Edit, I'm not sure how to add updates so I'll just include an edit. Uh, my mom and I just spoke on the phone and she's furious and on her way home. My friend, her dad, and I are heading to my house now, and my mom said she was going to call the cops as soon as she finished talking to me, so they might be there by the time I arrive. We've taken pictures, and my uncle, who is my mom's brother, will be over by 8 because I contacted him while he was at work. I've been considering your suggestions about withdrawing my money from my account, and I discussed it with my dad, who told me I could stay with him. Edit slash update 2. When I got home, my friend stayed in the car while her dad walked me in, and my stepdad was already gone. However, the police were at the house. As of now... The police said they couldn't really arrest him because it's not like he technically stole anything. It's hard to explain, but basically they said that because he washed the dress and didn't keep it, it's not considered theft. They suggested I could get a confession and have him pay or take him to small claims court. Also, the dress is non-refundable if damaged, so I can't return it or anything. While explaining everything to my mom, I got flustered and started crying, and she hugged me as I cried and told me that he's going to pay for this. This financial issue has been an ongoing argument, and I think he just pushed her too far this time, 
because she's really angry. I also talked to my uncle, and he's off work and on his way over. Apparently, my uncle and stepdad have a rocky history since my stepdad has mouthed off to him in the past. When I explained what happened, my uncle reassured me that everything would be okay, and if needed, he would buy back the dress before it sells out, so I'll still have it for prom. He does expect my stepdad to pay me back one way or another, so it looks like I'll probably likely end up with my dress for free. Maybe that's a small victory. I'll likely update more later tonight, but things seem to be heading in the right direction. Edit to clear up any confusion. I pay for the streaming service bills because I really want to want watch the shows on those platforms. And my mom works hard, but doesn't earn enough to afford those services on top of everything else. So I offered to pay for them so we could have them. She's not the kind of mother who would pick her husband over me, and she always defends me. My stepdad has never pulled a stunt like this before. He just tries to convince her to control my money and savings, but she's never touched my savings. I feel like that's why they always clash, because he has this mindset that we have all these financial troubles and your daughter could solve them with her savings, and you have access to them. My uncle came over, and he and my mom had a bit of an argument because he blamed her for enabling my stepdad's behavior by not leaving him, which he thinks is why my stepdad felt comfortable doing what he did. She argued back, saying she's always defended me against him and has never taken any of my money, which is true. We all talked about it for a while, and she revealed that they actually had an argument last night about paying off a car payment. She mentioned how all these bills are wearing her down, and he responded by saying it wouldn't be such a burden if she used my savings and didn't let me spend it on foolishness. She got angry and defensive because he keeps bringing it up. He also pointed out that the $900 I spent on my dress could have covered the car payment for the next two months. By the way, he only knows about my savings because he knows how much I get paid and that I've been saving all of it, so we think that's what triggered him to throw my dress in the washer. My mom and stepdad have been texting back and forth, and he admitted that he washed the dress to teach me a lesson about not spending so much money on something that can be ruined so easily. But he deliberately set the washer to heavy duty, so it's clear he intended to destroy it. My uncle has offered to replace the dress so I don't need to worry about not having my special dress. We called the boutique and explained everything, and they said they could order another dress though it won't arrive until February 23rd, which is fine. My mom sent my stepdad a long, threatening message basically calling him out. She's really heated right now, so I'm going to try to ask for a screenshot later. She and my dad also talked and decided it would be best if I got my own bank account so that my stepdad can't use the excuse that she has access to my account, which is also great. My mom and I had a discussion about what's going to happen next, and she said she's not sure yet because it's all a bit overwhelming for her. She's seriously considering leaving him, but I guess she doesn't want to talk about that just yet. My stepdad is currently staying at a friend's house. I'll keep updating, and I might have another one tomorrow. My friend's parents are going to keep the dress at their house, and I'll pick it up tomorrow to have as proof. My uncle has wired me $1,000 for my prom dress, and I'm planning to use the money to replace the dress and buy new shoes. He's quite well off which is one of the reasons I reached out to him in the first place. I'm going to call the boutique and see if they can reorder the dress, and I'll just pick it up sometime in February. However, we still want my stepdad to pay in some way, and we're working on that. My uncle has also called my other uncles and aunts, with my permission, to vent about the situation, so now most of my mom's side of the family, who all live in Georgia, are aware of what happened. I woke up to a flood of texts expressing sympathy and even some offers of money for prom, which have added up to about $300. So that's a positive outcome. My mom also contacted my step-in-laws, who then spread the news, complete with pictures, and I guess most of them are shocked, except for his mother, who is still buying his excuse that it's just a dress and it was an accident, despite the evidence. I also got a call from my stepdad's sister, who expressed sympathy, and through our conversations, I learned that my stepdad has been asking a lot of his family for financial help because for some reason, he's bought so many things on credit that he can't keep up with the payments. My mom called my stepdad for answers, which we recorded and he's basically trying to blame her, saying that if she hadn't pissed him off last night, he wouldn't have done it. He claimed he was trying to teach me a lesson about being responsible with money and that he had planned to lecture me afterward. My mom has now broken up with him because he blamed her for caring more about me than him, which is bizarre. This led to an argument where my mom said, you think I care about her more than you? Well, you're about to see just how much I do. Their relationship had already been rocky because he can't manage money and this was the final straw for her. So a lot has happened. First off, we've placed an order for my dress and it's being shipped now. It should arrive at the boutique by February 23rd, so that's sorted. My stepdad and mom are officially broken up, but my mom isn't sure yet if she'll proceed with the divorce because everything is still so fresh and lawyers are expensive, and she can't afford it right now. 
They also have a prenup, so they don't share any assets, and the house is my mom's. It was her dad's house that she inherited. She had a different dad from her siblings who all share the same father. My stepdad came back with his brother after a while and tried to make up for everything by buying me a new dress from Macy's that's similar in color and length to the original. But it's very tacky and ugly and looks nothing like the dress I originally had. He then tried to apologize, saying it wasn't his intention to ruin the dress and that he was just going to wash it to make a point like, see, this is why you don't buy things like this. And then he would have bought me another dress. But that explanation makes no sense at all. My uncle also came back to the house after I texted him that my stepdad had returned. My uncle was at the store when he got my message, and when he arrived, they got into a huge argument. My uncle demanded to know why my stepdad destroyed the dress, but my stepdad said he wasn't going to let anyone walk into his house and start making demands. My uncle called him a name and my stepdad told him to say it again. So he did, and they ended up fighting. My stepdad lost the fight and then threatened to call the cops, but we reminded him that he swung first. After that, he went on a rant, cussed us out, and left, taking the dress with him. We're actually planning to follow your advice and take him to small claims court, considering the evidence and the damage. Hopefully, we'll come out on top. Right now, my stepdad is staying at his parents' house. For those curious about my brothers, here's an update. My 15-year-old half-brother was at his girlfriend's house since Friday, so he missed all the drama, but he reached out to me today. I love him so much. My 18-year-old stepbrother, on the other hand, has basically taken his dad's side, so there's not much more to say about that. Also, for those who suggested changing the streaming passwords, I've done that, and my mom and I are going to set up a new bank account for me later today. Thanks so much for all the support. I'll keep you updated as we make plans and hopefully get a favorable verdict. Now to the next story, story two. My wife overreacts to our daughter's minor injuries, causing strain in our parenting and increasing tension within the family. My 28th wife, 26F Sophia, takes every scratch our daughters, 7 and 5, get extremely seriously. Every bruise, every scraped knee, every cut is an emergency to her. And because they're emergencies to her, they become emergencies to the girls. Not only does this mean it's hard to tell when an injury is actually dangerous. Did she twist her ankle or break it? Is her arm bruised or fractured, but the kids are responding badly to any hurt they feel now. At the mere sight of blood, the 7 starts wailing like she's been stabbed. Even worse, her sister has started intentionally banging her arm into things or falling on concrete if she thinks she's not getting enough attention. Last week, my wife took the oldest one to urgent care because she, I got a canker sore and Sophia was convinced it was something more sinister. While she was gone, I had the younger one who was upset that Sophia had spent so long on her sister and had now taken her to the doctor to get special attention. So she threw herself on the tile floor in front of me and started screaming and holding the wrist she hadn't actually twisted. I'm so tired of all of this, I just let her scream. When I didn't give her the attention she wanted, her screaming in pain turned into sobbing because I wasn't cuddling her and kissing her better and promising her cookies in a late bedtime. I told her I'd be in the den with the cats when she felt like joining us. I felt like a bitch for letting her cry herself out, but she's never going to learn to walk off scooter falls or getting hit with dodgeballs at this rate. And she can't be rewarded for this kind of behavior. It's just not healthy. Eventually, she ran out of tears and came to sit with us and I let her have a watered-down soda. Well, when Sophia got back with the older kid, who now had the same numbing gel we already had in the cabinet and $200 urgent care bill, our younger daughter told her what happened and now she's furious at me for ignoring something that could have been serious. I told her she's the one making mountains out of molehills and feeding into the actual dangerous behavior. We've been fighting about it all week and the kids have only been acting up more as a result. I'm so tired of this. Maybe my appendix will burst and I can spend a few nights in the hospital away from this insanity. Relevant comments op on if her wife had peed when she got pregnant and gave birth did her wife have any medical trauma op no and no both of them were adopted and to the best of my knowledge she's never had negative doctor experiences if she had it wouldn't make sense to keep dragging the girls in for scratch knees she's absolutely setting them up for failure she just refuses to see that if someone here can convince her to see a therapist or an ounce of reason related to this specific situation then they're miracle workers she's great in almost every other aspect i love her but the constant coddling and panicking is getting ridiculous. Did OP and her wife have infertility problems? OP, no, as far as I know, both of us were perfectly healthy reproductively speaking. All pregnancy is dangerous and IVFs usually result in multiples. Increasing the risks or forcing termination of it doesn't take right. And they're ridiculously expensive. A lot of places aren't exactly trustworthy when it comes to ensuring the health of sperm donors, etc. There wasn't a chance in hell I was ever carrying children, so that was out. She never fought to carry them. When we decided we wanted kids and we were in a place that it was feasible, we looking for agencies and found our girls. OP on the relationship her wife has with their daughters, and if she's overprotective OP, we've had long talks that always dissolve into arguments over the subject before. As I understand it, she really sees nothing wrong with what she's doing. She wants to make the girls feel like they'll be seen and taken care of, but she's going too far. She does spend time with them regularly. She has an office job and has them alone from 6 p.m. onwards on days when I work. 
Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And she doesn't work on weekends at all. But yes, the younger one has definitely learned that making it look like she's hurt herself or actually hurting herself, however minor, is a surefire way of getting Madri's attention. Not sure I helped last week. I don't want her thinking mama doesn't care, but I just could not bring myself to reward her pretending to be hurt. That's an interesting idea. It might help the girls, although I don't see it changing Sophia's behavior much. Update. Wow, my first post got more popular than I was expecting. Not a full update, but a few people were curious, so I thought I'd throw this out there with some of this week's developments and some clarifications. This sub only allows two updates, so the next one, if I end up publishing it, probably won't be anytime soon. Tuldur, my 28F wife, 26F, has been making our daughter's injuries worse by treating all of them like an emergency. This has led to the older one, 7, to genuinely believe that every injury could be fatal and the younger one, five, to realize that if she's hurt, she gets special things like cookies, candy, extended bedtimes, movies, etc., and is the main source of conflict in our marriage. Clarifications, one, this is not Munchausen by proxy. I all have got to lay off the Hulu Daka series and stop trying to diagnose strangers with serious and sinister medical issues based on one post written by their annoyed spouse. My wife does not hurt them. She is not poisoning them or looking for drugs to feed them or posting all over social media about how great she is and how lucky the girls are at such a cut or trying to scam people out of money or a Habitat for Humanity house. Sophia is not worrying for the attention of it. She is trying to ensure that they don't feel ignored and neglected to the point that she takes everything that they say seriously, but she's gone too far and it is now backfiring. The few people who pointed out that the younger's behavior of faking injuries or actually giving herself a bruise could develop into something more serious are correct, however, which is a concern that I also have. Two, attention. The girls get attention. They get plenty of attention from both of us. They are not being neglected to the point that they need to injure themselves as a cry for help. For one thing, my older daughter doesn't do that. She is just genuinely convinced that bruises could be internal bleeding and any bump on the head could be a concussion. Which means that I'm going to have to give her the period talk pretty soon or she's going to think she's dying if she starts early. For another thing, the younger one tends to only do it when she thinks her sister is getting something she wants or we said no earlier in the day. They get attention, but they get special attention when they're sick or hurt. Someone in the comments last time, don't remember the name, suggested flipping it to discourage the younger girl's behavior by essentially taking away fun things and forcing them to rest when they're sick or hurt. A few other people suggest pain charts of some variety or first aid classes. Those might help with the older one and so Sophia herself. That was probably the most viable advice I got however well-meaning and true a lot of other stuff was. 3. Therapy right now is not an option. You can suggest it all you want. I can and have suggested all I want, but as of right now it will not be happening anytime soon. We had a bad very experience with a highly regarded adoption specialist therapist a few years ago that resulted in our older daughter having more issues with her adoption than she did when we started, issues that we've had to figure out how to manage on our own because the two therapists we tried after that only compounded and exacerbated those new issues. My daughter would have been better off if she'd never been to therapy in the first place. As a result, my wife has lost almost all of her faith in mental health professionals. Quite frankly, I lost the majority of mine as well, and while I've made mention of it to Sophia, my bigger focus is on getting her to just change this one behavior. Four, was my wife traumatized as a child by being medically neglected? To the best of my knowledge, no. She doesn't have any long-term health issues, and she was never very involved in any physical and potentially dangerous sports when we were in school. Her family hasn't suffered from very many illnesses or accidents, even during COVID. So while I've driven myself to an emergency dentist before and broken my wrist without even knowing it, the only time she's ever been in a hospital was to pick her dad up from a colonoscopy, at least before she started taking our daughters in for benign bumps, bruises, and, uh, and cuts. Five. No, my wife does not have anything postpartum. The actual update. After a couple of other comments brought up how my girls behave away from us, I decided to ask. My wife works a normal 9, 5, while I work 3 12s from 6 p.m. to a.m. on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. During the winter, they have school and daycare respectively. This winter, the younger one will be in kindergarten, though. And during the summer, they both go to daycare from about 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on my work days and just in the mornings on other days as needed. I do drop-offs and pickups. When I picked them up on Monday, I decided to ask one of the caretakers how the girls had been behaving. She told me they were fine, they bickered sometimes, but there was nothing unusual going on. I asked what happens when they get hurt or feel sick during the day, how they handle it, etc. I didn't tell them about my wife, I didn't want to be telling tales out of or at school. I think she might have thought I was looking for help, which I was technically because she told me that as soon as a kid falls down or takes a ball to the face or anything else, they start the whole interaction by telling them you're okay and assessing the damage calmly as they approach. Even if the kid is bleeding, they don't react. They say something like, wow, that looked kind of scary. I bet it surprised you. 
let's see your arm slash leg slash whatever. She basically wrote me a script. I asked her how my girls reacted to it, and she told me that the older one was a little more sensitive than her peers. She cried easily, and they had to be extra firm with the your okays with her. The younger one she saw a little less. She's in a different age bracket. She only just turned five, so she's still technically in the pre croup but she'd never heard anything about her. I asked what exactly they do if a kid is bleeding or bruised. For bruises, they can sit with a little ice pack for 15 minutes before they need to come back to the ground, unless it's actually serious. And for cuts, they get it washed in a band-aid. So nothing exciting as far as I could tell. The fact that we haven't been called into the school to pick up our totally terribly injured five-year-old before tells me that she knows she won't get Madri's special treatment at the school. And since I will be the one picking her up if they think she's too sick or something, there's really no point in kicking up too much of a fuss unless she just wants to hold something cold for a few minutes. Neither of the girls have been hurt or sick this week. We stopped arguing because I frankly do not have the energy to do so constantly. I'll look into the pain chart and first aid classes and bring up born damage mitigation soon, once we've both had time to calm down. Additional information from OP, OP, I'm going to put this here since apparently it needs to be said. I am aware that saying it's okay or you're okay the way the daycare workers do is a good idea. This is what I have been trying to implement for a long time. Even if a child is genuinely hurt, adults need to remain calm to keep the child calm. If an adult is upset, then the already upset kid will become more upset and if that kid isn't upset then they will be when they see their parents freaking out. I am not looking for excitement. I genuinely have no idea how you read my post and got that impression. None if I'm playing checkers you've started a game of chess. I am trying to end the excitement. When I said nothing exciting in my post it was not because I don't want to implement something boring it's because I do. I very much want my kids being hurt to stop being exciting or rewarding. That is the entire point of everything here of a week of arguing. Of every other argument before this one. There was no one working up my older daughter. The younger one wasn't getting rewarded. If anything, being hurt at daycare got her essentially a timeout with an ice pack or rubbing alcohol in a pad on the back. That is a good thing. That is what I want. OP on communicating with her wife about their daughters on how to react if they got hurt. OP, I've talked with her a lot about it. It used to start when she was already working up because one of the girls was hurt or something and I'd try to calm her down and help the girls calm down. She'd be so keyed up that it would turn into a fight fast. So after a while, I stopped trying to interfere at the time because us arguing while one girl and inevitably the other cried wasn't exactly helpful. After that, I started waiting until after all of the excitement of the emergency had passed by to bring it up, especially when the younger girl started intentionally falling or bumping into things. I'd try to tell her that making a huge deal out of every scrape was just making things worse and the girls needed to figure out how to self-regulate and tell if they were actually hurt or not. She would accuse me of being callous and tell me she wasn't going to make our daughters feel helpless, hurt and abandoned. And no matter how hard either of us tried is dissolved into another argument. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.